Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone, and welcome. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. I'm so excited for today's show because we're talking about uh, two of my favorite topics, and that is consciousness and love. The evolution of consciousness. What is the full potential? How consciousness evolves and how we can assist our own evolution. Growing into one's full potential while still in a human body that's what we're all doing here. How frequency, quota of love, and being aware of controlling our thoughts and reactions is a jump start to a higher state of consciousness and evolution. Senses beyond the basic five senses, accessing the Akashic records, quantum reality, out of body travel, and how psychic surgery is connected to manifesting reality. So today I'm going to introduce you to this amazing woman by the name of Angela LaRue. And she is going to, she's one of these beings that is absolutely walking her frequency and walking her talk. She's got many amazing, fascinating things that she's gonna share with us today. And I want you to call into the show at 1-800-930-2819 and ask Angie questions as you're feeling called to call in. And so without further ado, I want to introduce you to Angie LaRue. Welcome to the show, Angie. Hello. Thank you, Cornelia, for having me. It's really wonderful to be here, and I'm excited to hear from our audience. And hello out there. Yay, yay. Before we get started and, and talking about this fascinating topic, I want to I wanna talk a little bit about your bio and um, what, you, what you do and what you've been up to over these last uh, years in your awakening journey. So you are a certified master Christologist, an energy practitioner, a healer, a psychic, a teacher, spiritual counselor, and psychic surgeon. You're the manufacturer of Oregon generators, which definitely I can't wait to hear more about what that is all about. And you have a small lab of making carbon 60 oils. You had your spontaneous awakening of consciousness on December 9th in 2011, and your entire life radically altered after that. In time, you learned that the onset of so many abilities was remembering which had been well used and developed over many lifetimes, including lives that you has, had where you were a priestess, a crystal acolyte, a monk, a priest, healer, and other associated vocations. You now use that recovered memory in a variety of ways related to health, well-being, and the evolution of consciousness. That's quite an awakening. And that must have been quite an experience for you as you started remembering these gifts with your spontaneous awakening. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it really was. And, you know, like many others who have had very radical spontaneous awakenings, kind of the cosmic two by four. Um, I actually thought I was losing my mind for a while. And we did a lot of tests. We did psychological tests and IQ mm. tests. I went to doctors. <laughs> I, I didn't know this could actually happen to a human being. I 
went to the Methodist church. Both of my parents were pastors. And somehow this had never been discussed. So I didn't know what had happened to me at all. And uh, it, it seemed pretty harsh, to be honest with you. And, um, you know, when the psychological testing came back that I was perfectly sane, I was actually really disappointed because that meant that I couldn't solve this with a pill <laughs> or a padded room. And so I was forced to become kind of a Nancy Drew, a sleuth, and solve this great mystery which had happened to me. And that and getting in touch with spirit led me to begin to understand what had happened, what it was, get re-educated, everything got stripped away from me. I instantly, my 20 year marriage ended. Um, I had been living in Hawaii when it happened and I was kind of kicked off the island. Uh, spirit was like, let's go to the mainland. I went to the mainland. I was led to quite a few countries, in fact. And I began my internship uh, with Spirit and I was taught a lot of this. I was just drug into crystal shops by spirit and made to feel crystals. And, you know, it was all these ways of, of getting me to finish the waking up. And, wow. um, yeah, it took about three years to land it all on the tarmac and, and integrate. And there was times I remember walking through Flagstaff, Arizona and being pulled into solid job objects, you know, the, the, the uh, post box on the street, a uh, crystal that was in a window. And I mean, just drunkenly reeling towards them. I just couldn't walk a straight line. And I was really concerned I was going to get arrested for pump public drunkenness. And knowing that, you know, I had taken nothing, I was in some state that I didn't understand. And, and I remember complete strangers coming up uh, to me on the street and saying, oh, honey, you need to get grounded. <laughs> and I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> right, right. It would be months before I figured that out. And yeah, I was time slipping at times. And, and, and it can be challenging. It can be really challenging to get this all sorted out and become a triad of mind, body, and spirit. Right. I mean, you know, I can totally understand the great getting grounded piece uh, so much light coming into you so much uh intel so much intelligence so much light is coming in into your physical body and then what do you do with all that light if you're not grounded right what do you do with all that consciousness if you're not if you're not grounded and you, you stay do, spiritually drunk 24 yeah seconds. right yeah and it sounds to me like you know when you're talking about um where you were feeling like um you know you had to go through psychological testing and because there was no explanation out there really for what it is that you were experiencing. And it seems like your body, your physical body um, was like spontaneously acting out a kind of like with your will kind of like set aside, like you, you, you almost couldn't do anything about it. You were like spontaneously acting out what the body was calling for you had to show up in these various different um, things without, um, you know, without being, go yes, I'm willing to do this. Uh, you know, you had to, so um, that's got to be a, a, a challenging within, thing. Within two hours of the awakening, the kundalini flowed. And it would be about three years before I learned that that was kundalini. I thought lightning had come out of the ground. <laughs> okay. I had been laying on the carpet when it happened. Um, and my whole body arched backwards like this. And only the back of my head and the back of my heels were touching as this energy coursed through me, this, like I was electrified. I, I thought it was ground lightning. And then what was left of my pea little brain, it was like going, ground lightning? Is there such a thing? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't even know. And that, that caused you know, all the chakras to blow wide open. And I had, oh my goodness, it was endless strange things, you know, when the sacral chakra went open, I couldn't go poo for 21 days. And that led me to doctors. And, and then when the crown chakra went, I thought there was tarantulas crawling on my head to the, to the extent, like I was so positive, things were crawling around on my head that I was asking people, do you see like six tarantulas on top of my head? And they're like going, no. 
Uh-huh. Like, are yeah. you really sure? Because I sure feel them. <laughs> oh my you goodness. Know, just every chakra was a complete drama. And yeah, I, I totally thought I was losing it. Yeah. So, um, wow. So what happened is you were just laying in your living room on the floor and um, the awakening kind of, you know, the, the lightning, is that what took place? Um, yes, that was, that was two hours after the awakening, the actual awakening, I was on the phone. Uh, I'm a professional artist and I was on the phone with a customer who was contracting me to, to make a painting for them. And mm-hmm. I had walked into the kitchen to get a glass of water. And when I turned around with my glass in hand, my, I, it was like, I could see through the atoms that made up the cabinets, the walls, the different devices on the countertops. I could see it in reality beyond it and reality beyond that and beyond that. And I didn't know if something was happening to my vision or what was happening. And I looked back towards the doorway, like maybe I'll just leave the kitchen. I don't have to worry about it dissolving. <laughs> I'm going to a room that's not dissolving. Okay. <laughs> Like, I can't deal with this. I'm on a professional phone call. And all of a sudden, (laughs) this mist formed in the middle of my kitchen. And it made this kind of shape like this. And it was this fog. And I fell into it. And I fell, what I describe as between worlds, right? You know how you have, like, the kitchen wall and the living room wall, but there's this space in between that's not kitchen and it's not living room? That's what, I, it's like I fell in between worlds. I wasn't in this world, but I wasn't anywhere else. I was in the space between worlds. And I'm yelling on the phone, help, I'm falling. My gosh. <laughs> They're like, where are you falling to? I don't know. It has no top, no bottom. There's no lights. I, there's just light emitting from my body. And it's just like this silvery gray fog all around me. Wow. And I'm not sure what happened, but I kind of came out of it. And I was sliding down the kitchen cabinets, water sloshing all over me on a crash course to the floor. And obviously, I needed to get off the phone. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's kind of hard to do when we're on a professional phone call and uh, we're having a spiritual awakening. Yeah. Wow. I'm so, I'm so glad that you're here talking about this because honestly, I've never met anyone that has had this experience before. So I'm... I'm certain that there's many others that are going to be experiencing this type of awakening coming, you know, uh, in, in our evolution. So it's, it's wonderful that you're here sharing this with us today. I want to send people to your website right away. Would you please share with our listeners where they can find out more about you before we go on break? Yes. Um, please go to www crystalarrays.com. That's C-R-Y-S-T-A-L-A-R-R-A-Y-S.com. Crystalarrays.com. Wonderful. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with the Cornelia Stephanie show, Living Heaven on Earth. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Janet Hickox and I want to tell you a little story about a story and how my friend Cornelia Stephanie helped me through to the other end of that story. I have gone from the dark of a story I was telling myself that wasn't true to the light of optimism to see my way out of where I was and to where I wanna go. And it all started with uh, her scheduling a session for me to help me reclaim my money or my financial empowerment. Up until that point, I had been telling the story that my business was dying, that my business was not successful anymore. And the more I tried to figure out what was going on, the worse I felt about it. And when I had to get ready to do the session with Cornelia, she asked me to go look at the numbers and where I was uh, through the year to date. And then also to come prepared with a number that I wanted to uh, raise my income to. Well, I was quite comfortable with that part, right? I knew where I wanted to be. Uh, What I wasn't comfortable with doing is going and looking up those numbers. But I made myself do it, even though I tried to backpedal my way out of the session. Um, She didn't know that, but I was going to try to get myself out of the session. And I looked up those numbers. And it was incredible that I discovered through that process that my business wasn't dying. In fact, I was doing 12% better than I had the year before. So I was shocked. 
I was shocked literally at the power of the story that I had been telling for months. But more than that, I was shocked that I had allowed myself to get there. And uh, later in that day when I had my session with Cornelia, she pointed out some very obvious things like, how are you going to get where you want to go if you don't know where you want to go? How are you going to get there if you don't have the goals written out, if you don't have it uh, set up so that you know where you are and where you're going to go? Totally makes sense, right? If I, and I had been in business, uh, somebody else's business as a sales manager for years, and I, I was a national sales manager. <laughs> I had awards for sales management. I had business awards because of numbers. And yet when it came to doing my own business, I totally forgot all that I'd ever learned. So by the time Cornelia working with me in just one session, got me to look deeper at the numbers and where did I want to go and actually, you know, claiming where I wanted to go. Um, I was filled with a sense of optimism and hope like you can't believe. It was like everything shifted for me. And I am so looking forward to our continued sessions to see how far I can really push myself to get where, I, where I've only dreamed of being, where I've never taken the dream and actually brought it into concrete existence. So thank you, Cornelia, for the work that you're doing out there. I appreciate it, and I can't wait to see where I go from here. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, and I'm with my very special guest, Angie LaRue, today. And we're talking about the evolution of consciousness. And Angie had a spiritual awakening that happened for her in 2011, and it was very abrupt. And this is not something that, uh, you know, um, that she was prepared for. So one of the questions that I wanted to ask her, we were talking about this during break, is was this written in the pre-plan? Pre, pre and um, was, she, was, she, was she part of that awakening? Did she have consciousness? Did you have consciousness of this, uh, Angie, that you were, that, that you, um, you, you might've written it into the pre-plan of your awakening and you were part of that creation? That's what I'm curious about. And what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> it took me a few years, uh, you know, being the detective to figure out what happened. And it looks like I set myself up. Yeah, you did. It looks like it. Um, mm -hmm. The day of the awakening was the passing of the Geminid comets. There was a rare once only every 300 years lunar eclipse that happened. And oh, there was another cosmological event. So it's like, it's like the cosmos where our planet is, where we are in our spiral arm of the galaxy, where our spiral arm in the galaxy is compared to the rest of the Milky Way. It's kind of a clock um, that spirits use. That's the time mechanism. And yeah, that all clicked around to wake up and in some ways I had kind of set the stage for it. So Another thing is about a month before I mm -hmm. had just kind of really looked at myself in the mirror, really looked and was very startled by what I saw. My eyes were getting dull. They were losing their life. Uh, my skin was getting very pallid. Um, it, it looked like I was losing a life force, right? And that made me realize that in fact I wasn't liking my life at all and mm -hmm. in fact whatever the point of being here had been if there was one I missed it and I had this conversation with Scott and I was like I'm sorry I never led my husband to you he always stayed an atheist you know I'm sorry that nothing more is of this life is is come of this than where we're at and what we're doing, which is just being a consumer. We're just taking up space and oxygen and resources. And this all seems pretty meaningless. And if this was what being a human was about, stop the train, let me off, I'm done. I don't want to be here anymore. This is, this is ridiculous. And I actually gave the music I went and played um, at my funeral that Sunday to the choir director. And I quietly went about making my plans, my exit. And it was kind of a case of the right hand didn't know what the left hand was doing. I was hiding from myself that I was even gonna do this. 
And when I look back, I'm not sure what I was going to do, except I think I was maybe just going to stop eating and let a health crash occur, something like that. Okay. And the awakening came within a month or so. So basically you were birthing, you were, you were giving birth to your new self while the old human was, was dying. And you I guess so. basically had said, you know, goodbye. The old, old self was dying. The new self was being born. Yep. And part of that, because you looked in the mirror and you saw that spirit, um, that spirit, that there were, you needed a lifeline. You needed something else. And that this wasn't going to be sustaining you any longer. And that you didn't want to be on this hamster wheel that we've been on for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Yeah. You're absolutely incredible. And, uh, you know, when you said that, um, that you, that you were probably part of this, you know, that you did that where you're like, yeah, it's, it's that spirit that you have, that you can do it, that you can do it. Sign me up. I'm down for this. I'm going to, I want to do this. I can do this. I can do this. It's, it's that energy. It's that courage. It's that divine feminine energy that courageous virtue that said yes to the awakening the pre-plan right mm -hmm. yeah it, not even knowing my human mind not even knowing there was such a thing but my human reacting out of kind of desperation of life having no value and making no sense um to kind of create this phoenix rising kind of thing and so basically i gave up my human life and i gave up rights to my human life and asked god to take me home and this is yeah. when my higher self takes over and creates complete utter chaos <laughs> and starts teaching me all these incredible things which have led to i'm kind of a committee now you know there's mind body and spirit and everybody has a vote mind doesn't run the show anymore and mm -hmm. uh, it has a very important place. I appreciate my human a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she's not capable of running the whole show. It's, yeah. It takes all of us. And we have to listen to the body, which has its own sets of needs and its Absol own vote. And Absolutely. Respect. Right. It's, it's all about value, honor, and respect, isn't it? It's, it's about listening to the heart. And it's about letting the old human fall away and die away. The programmed human that had been um, habitually answering to a call that wasn't true to our authentic organic nature. Yeah. And now here's, here, here, here that is, we are at this time in our evolution. And uh, I truly lived yeah. this life for someone else, um, for my husband, you know, my entire life was spent. How long were you married? Uh, 20 years, almost, almost 20 years, like three months shy of 20 years. And you um, said your husband was an atheist? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. He was a biologist. Um, and he, he worked for the no, FBI? No, no, said, no, 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 no. He was um, a wide network engineer oh. uh, with general, uh, general dynamics. Oh, okay. So very high clearances and stuff, which when the awakening happened, kept me locked in because I couldn't get help. There was nobody I could ask questions to uh, because you have to lead a really stellar life that has no questions. You can't potentially be any kind of a concern on a national level, but that's, I don't want to go too much into that, but it yeah. did keep me kind of locked in, which is part of why um, my marriage so instantly dissolved, I guess. And part of why I was led away from Hawaii and to the mainland was getting out of underneath that whole patriarchal system where I, I had lived a life of servitude. I had gotten my husband that job through my friends and contacts. Wow. And then I spent my life, you know, ironing his clothes and feeding him and keeping his house clean while he had that job. And I, I wasn't using my life. I mean, I was a little bit. You know, I served on charity committees and I was a professional artist and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But not, not for the potentially really great purpose that we can use our life for, which is getting over ourselves and actually being there and helping others, helping right. others get over themselves so they can be a light as well. I want to I touch on a, a thing, you know, a, a lot of women have given their power away to um, relationships karmic relationships because that's what it sounds like the relationship that you had with your husband was a karmic relationship karmic relationships of, of of the past where we've given our power away and to really then claim that power back to claim our authority back to claim that light back to claim that those all the gifts because i want to talk about your gifts i want to talk about all the amazing gifts that you now have 
who you are today, that had you stayed true to that old life, you had just gotten to a point where you just couldn't deny, you could not deny your, your gifts, you couldn't deny your power, you couldn't deny your love for your love of humanity, for your love of being here, why you came to this planet. Yeah. So, right, giving, giving your power away, giving our power away has been, uh, I, I know so many, so many women that have been challenged in claiming their authority back and claiming that back. So um, trusting that path. And I know that's so scary when, 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 when you don't have anybody to talk to and, and you don't know what's going on with you and, and you think you're crazy and, and all of these things. So um, well done. Thank well you. done. Well done. And I know that this journey wasn't easy. Uh, for you, because like you said, it was uh, chaos for three years, um, but you just, you, you did it. And so well done, well done. And now life is um, amazing. You're living in, in bliss and there's, you're helping uh, thousands of people and you're doing wonderful things. So who is Angie today and what does she do? Mm. Oh my goodness, uh, Angie today, um, I am an instrument of the divine. I am a vessel through which light and love and health uh, can be illuminated and brought to people. I'm, a, I'm another voice in the wilderness saying, have hope. It's all just a game. You're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm a psychic. Um, I do readings via Zoom like this. I do lots and lots of them in person. And when I say a psychic, again, I'm just kind of the cell phone. The message comes from, you know, your higher self, your angels and guides, and I'm just the translator. Mm -hmm. a healer. And again, I'm just a vessel. I'm a vessel through which divine energies and healing energies can run. Um, I'm a psychic surgeon. Again, I'm just a vessel. I'm the one who comes up with the mental constructs for organizing the energy that reconstructs, you know, whatever part of the body is needing help. Um, so, so basically, w w if if there's a, a part of a body that um, that needed needed surgery, mm -hmm. uh, you would be able to go in and do psychic surgery. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. on, on that person and basically uh, the, the organ or whatever the disease is would be healed? Yeah, it's, do we have time to go into that? Um, well, we, we actually, we're getting ready to go to break, but we will continue on. We will, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it when we come back from break. You're listening yeah. to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Charlene Hess, and I want to share with you my wonderful experience of choosing to use Cornelia Stephanie as my life coach. My life is so different now from where it was when I began working with her in 2011. At that time, I was in a dysfunctional marriage. I had my own business. I was raising two children and completely dead inside. After working with Cornelia, I began to gain confidence. I began to learn and understand how to use my emotions in my life. I learned how to process the emotions that were stored in my body, the ones that I thought that I had already worked through in my 12 years of counseling prior to working with her. The process that she had taken me through of using my emotions to heal my life, to use my anger to find peace was absolutely incredible. I have been working with her one-on-one uh, -on -one for many years now. And even though I am in a place now where I am thriving in my life, I still refer to Cornelia as my coach and I still work with her on an ongoing basis where we're always checking in and keeping me accountable in my growth. After working with her for many years, I decided to go through her wholeness certification coach, uh, coaching program, and it has absolutely been an amazing process. 
I now am a certified empowerment coach and I got certified through her program and I am taking clients and helping them to find the empowerment in their lives. One of the things that I love about Cornelia is that she taught me that I am the authority in my own life. And that was a really difficult experience to go through because it was really fighting against all of the dogma and programming that was so ingrained in my brain that all of the authority is outside of me. But as I began to understand and believe and adopt and know the truth that I am the authority in my life is when everything in my life started to shift and change. I became responsible for my decisions. I became responsible for creating a life that I love. And now I'm here in this amazing, beautiful place, living a life of so much happiness and joy. And no matter what life throws at me, I have the tools to be able to approach everything from a place of empowerment. And now I have the ability to help other people do the same. So working with Cornelia has absolutely been the best decision that I've ever made in my life. It has taken me from a life of absolute misery and given me the tools to be able to have a life of absolute complete joy. So I cannot recommend working with her enough. I hope that you decide to choose to have her as your coach. Go through her empowerment coaching program, go through her wholeness certification, and I guarantee you won't regret it. Hi, everybody. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, and I'm just loving this show today, and I hope you are too. We want to we wanna have you call into the show. If you have any questions, you can call us at one 800 930-2819 and you can ask Angie any questions that you may have that you want to talk to her about. So before the break we were talking about psychic surgery and I want to ask a little bit more about psychic surgery how that's done and then also talk to Angie about John of God. So she's got some information that she's going to share with us. So tell us about the psychic surgery that you do, that you do with people on a Zoom call where you take them th through healings and uh, through um, doing the psychic surgery. Um, yeah, so there's quite a few different things that happen. There's healings, um, which are done in one manner, and there's a bunch of different modalities for healing, and you know all of them are valid. It really depends on how clear of a channel the practitioner is. is at. And that even that is not true. There's a lot of factors involved in and a lot of it is permission. How much permission do you give for healing? How much are you holding back that you, you know, love your story, you, it's part of your identity. These are roadblocks that prevent, you know, healings uh, from being instant 100%. You know, um, it, there's a lot of factors involved in how well a healing works. Now, a psychic surgery is a little bit different. Um, one thing it requires is medical intuition, and that is the ability to move your consciousness inside of the person's body. Uh, and basically, it's like an X-ray or CAT scan or MRI. You can see inside the body, and you can move around inside the body. And from that position, you can see exactly what's wrong, and you can reorder the atoms and the electrons to form new structures and then physical reality follows suit hmm. yeah. wow that's it in a nutshell huh that's yeah. that's psychic surgery yeah so a i a bit more complicated but yeah that's it in a nutshell and so it? this is what you do this is what you do and people can find out more about your work at would you let us know the website again hmm. www crystallarays.com c-r-y-s-t-a-l-a-r-r-a-y-s.com and yeah wonderful and one of the things that we're offering people today is we're offering a free gift that you are offering to our listeners and it's the um, seven keys to raise your frequency is that mm -hmm. right a right. video and and um they can uh email you would that be a, a great way for people to receive the video absolutely and that email address is crystalarays at gmail.com c-r-y-s-t-a-l-a-r-r-a-y-s at gmail.com and just request it and we'll give you a link to it it is a private closed video um, so you do need the link to get in to watch it. And it's, it's really kind of about how to raise your frequency in the middle of stress. 
Right, right. Mm. When something's going down and you're about to become a victim of whatever that drama is, this is a way to get in control yourself, stay out of the drama, and then actually be able to help the people in the drama instead of becoming a victim and getting embroiled in it yourself. So it's really practical tools that, that you can use. It's not high mysticism or anything. In order to uh, maintain and hold your vibration and emit the highest frequency, you made this gift available for people, which is fantastic. So tell us about John of God. You know, there's a lot of people, uh, John of God is out of Brazil mm -hmm. and uh, there is, uh, you know, healings that take place over there. People go and, and regularly go and uh, receive healings and um, amazing things have happened over there. And you well, also- Well over a million healings have happened. Wow. So John of God is um, a medium. He moves his consciousness completely out of his body and one of about 37 different beings come in. Um, mostly only ones who were males in their last time, last, last lifetime. Most of them were doctors and surgeons. Um, some of them were spiritual counselors, priests, that type of things. And, uh, you know, one of them is King Solomon. So it's pretty much along the Catholic line and the, and the Christian line, the, the beings, or as they call them, they're the entities that work with John of God. And yeah, he does it, uh, I think, four days a week. And it's kind of amazing. You go there basically on a spiritual retreat. And the days that John of God is there, that you are going before him and the entities, and you only get a second, and you're starting at like six o'clock in the morning. There's thousands, hundreds and thousands of people there and it's a long line that slowly moves and the entities are scanning you the first time you go there they're seeing what's happening in your auric field you have to wear white because white doesn't compete with the colors in our auric field and um, they're scanning it seeing what's wrong and then you're told what to do next because sometimes you will need to raise your frequency before you can have a surgery the surgery is not even going to work until you raise your frequency and so you know there might be request of things go bathe yourself in the sacred waterfalls go sit under the john of god lights you know that kind of thing to raise your frequency up and you're told what day you come back for your psychic surgery and they're done in mass and so there's a great number of beings that come in and and uh, do the surgeries on everybody all at once um and then that evening, like during the night, you have 24 hours in seclusion with your eyes closed, more beings show up and do more work. And it's really amazing. Wow, that sounds absolutely incredible. So you were drawn there, you feel like you were drawn there. You know, because part of what we were talking about with your bio earlier is that in, in, in 2011, you had your um, Kundalini awakening. And, um, and then, you know, all these gifts started, you started remembering, you know, various, all your different gifts from different lifetimes when you were a priestess, when you were a monk, when you were a priest, a healer, and, and all of these remembering started happening. And at first it seemed really scary and frightening because you had, you had no way of knowing what all of this is here now. But um, the more and more you were, um, you know, uh, grounding and, and listening and, and um, being guided to taking spiritual action uh, on, on some of the things like being drawn to this crystal, being drawn into this shop, being drawn. So going to see uh, John. Heard it. <laughs> yeah. I, I tease spirit that she herded me around. She heard it. That's <laughs> a great way to say that. It's a great way to say that. So would you say that you were also, you know, of course, uh, guided to go to see John of God to assist you in your development there? Uh, I was. I, you know, the whole psychic surgery thing and medical intuition had already opened up to me. And, and I was getting, you know, a number of people who were coming. And I was, you know, I don't really have a background in anatomy. And so, you know, when I run into like a lesser mesenteric artery that's leaching blood and has aneurysms everywhere and has already had surgeries and there's shunts put on it and it's still not working from traditional surgeries. And so now they're coming to me and all I can think of is like psychic duct tape to wrap the whole thing with, you know, and it's like, I need more elegant solutions than, you know, kind of, you know, mental constructs that involve you know, really basic items, right? And so I went there to actually have more elegant solutions as a psychic surgeon. That was my intent in going there was to talk to these great masters who have done over a million um, miracles. 
Mm -hmm. And so my request, as we translated into Portuguese, and my request got translated into protection for my house and home and my practice. And I was like, I don't need that. You know, I know that's 101 energy management. <laughs> I know how to do that. I'm working on my doctoral. <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, <laughs> you know, that's okay. It's still a wonderful place to be. And it's wonderful to be a part. And I'm so glad I came. And I'll come up with some minor issues uh, that I can ask for healings on. And so the day came that, um, you know, I was to have my healing. And you come in, it's a large room. There's like 100 people. And John of God, with whoever is incorporating him, comes in. And as he came in, he stopped and put his hand on my head. And I, I was quite amazed by this. And we lifted off. I looked up, and it, it was John of God with uh, whoever was in him at, at that time. And he, I was, this is a very moving moment for me. He didn't touch anyone else at all. I was wow. the only person that was touched out, out of all those people. And mm -hmm. so I asked Spirit later about, I was like, was that little, is that, you know, is he just like acknowledging that little thing you did? Because you get, when you go before John of God, you get like one second with John of God. You get to touch his hand and he's already taking his hand and leading you off where there's assistance that help you out of the room. Because it's a huge line. You've been waiting in hours and hours in line and now it's your turn. And right as I went to touch John of God's hand, my higher self went, Whoosh! like this little thing. And I was just like, what did you just do? You know, you can't just like shoot energy into, <laughs> into unsuspecting strangers. And, and it blew my whole second. Like my higher self, he totally usurped my human who was all excited to meet John of God. So I thought maybe that's what, you know, that was about was a little cute little thing my higher self did. And she's like, no. And I was like, well, were they acknowledging that it, what I had come for here got mistranslated into Portuguese? And she's like, no. I was like, well, what else is there? You know, one second interaction with John of God, what else could it possibly be? And I was like, well, was I being already acknowledged as being a psychic surgeon? And she's like, yes. Oh. So that was, a, that was a big moment for me. And then that night when the John of God entities came, um, I saw them very distinctly and very clearly. And, and there was these um, uh, kind of uh, greenish gold lights circling around me uh, really rapidly and flashing on and off, right? And I thought it was some kind of strange tropical lightning bug or something and I asked the hotel management the next day and they're like not John of God entities oh my goodness yeah, so. wow and the entities are are also with you now in your in your haven right they, yeah, they came home with me they came home with you yeah. yeah they they like playing with you and they they love the fact that they're with someone that uh will allow to use their assistance, I'm sure, oh, right? Oh yes, I, I just respect them and appreciate them so much. And, and I invite them to, to any dealings I have uh, with any clients, whether it's, it's psychic readings or cleansing and purifying, so or healings or, you know, psychic surgeries. And, you know, I've had people, you know, tell me that just in talking with me that, they received a healing and they recognize the energy as being those energies connected with John of God. And this is actually how I learned that the entities came home with me is uh, other people who started telling me, you know, I had several psychics go, oh, you've got a lot more with you now. Oh, John of God entities? The John of God entities are with you? So I actually, I actually learned through other people because I could be a little dense sometimes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't seem like that to me, but uh, because it, it feels like you are you are absolutely uh, amazing with your higher consciousness and what you're um, emitting forth and what you're bringing forth. And so I deeply treasure the fact that we're having this conversation today. So thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll be right back. My name is Bob Skeel. I'm 91 years old and I want to take a few minutes now to share with you the important role, actually the critical role, Cornelia has played in my life. I say critical because I'm not sure I'd be alive at all to the many possibilities that make up our human experience at my age, if not for her. 
I could have easily become another dead man walking, only half conscious, stumbling through my remaining years, if it hadn't been for Cornelia. Six years ago, I lost my wife to Alzheimer's. We'd been married for 61 years. I never thought I'd be a widower, but there I was, suddenly lost and alone, but with the good sense to set a working goal for myself. I was going to spend the rest of my life committed to unconditional love, whatever that meant and wherever that took me. A year or so later, Cornea came along, helping me over several years to focus that unconditional love where it had never been focused before, on me. My whole life, my entire being had been focused on love of neighbor, and I had derived great satisfaction from that. But in the process, I had ignored the second part. I love your neighbor as yourself. Now it was time to direct that love inward. I didn't see that right away, but Cornelia did, and she drew me there. She drew me actually to God. Through many conversations over coffee and after numerous, sometimes tearful, agonizing discussions, Cornelia was able to lead me kicking and screaming to within where I needed to be. It was there finally that I was able to re-identify myself. It was in bringing unconditional love to myself that I now saw myself in a new light, a fully conscious, worthy human being capable of healing, loving, and creating in my own right all these gifts of the evolutionary process. I'm a new man now, younger as I get older. I don't move as fast as I once did, of course, but my smile is quicker and I engage the heart and mind of others more readily. I would likely not be at such a wonderful stage in my life, if not for Kania. I owe my new life to her, a wonderful friend and a constant source of inspiration. Thank you, Cornelia. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. And I'm with my very special guest, Angie LaRue. And we have a caller. We have a caller on the show. Jenny from Seattle, you are on the air. Hi, Jenny. Hi. Oh, it's, I'm loving the show and I'm so happy I got in on it. <laughs> Very much enjoying the story. Um, so I'm due to have a glaucoma surgery coming up in October because it's, I have a problem with all the drops they're using. They did the laser work and um, now scheduled me to put a shunt in, which um, I'm hesitant about because they've only been doing this in the United States for six months. So that's why I'm very much interested in psychic surgery. <laughs> Is the shunt because of swelling of the eyeball? The pressure. The pressure, the pressure. is too high and it's, I'm losing vision because of the high pressure. Okay. And you're in Seattle? Yes. Okay. Um, so I guess, first off, it's potentially possible I've definitely removed uh, glaucoma from eyes before. Um, mm -hmm. That's easy enough. The swelling in the eyeballs is a little harder to do. Um, mm -hmm. possible. It goes down very slowly, to be honest with you. So far, I've done a few eye surgeries, and that's my experience: is it has to be re reabsorbed by the by the body. But I can program it to be reabsorbed by the body. But it does seem to take a while. Um, so it seems to be a slow, just as it's slow to build up. Uh, it seems to be slow to go back down again. Um, and the other thing, I guess, that would be very pertinent for you, is I. I do heal, I can do remote healings, but psychic surgeon surgeries, I can't do remote. I, I need to do those in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm definitely interested in your, looking at your website and it looks like you have a lot to offer. So. Thank you. Um, 
Well, thank you. I, I just love your story. And I also love that you said you learn through other people. And because um, I feel a little dense. And <laughs> to me, you don't sound dense at all. I, mean, I just really, I learn from other people too. And it takes me a while to for things to kick in. And then when they do, I really get it. So. And sometimes it just requires, I mean, I'm just kind of another voice in the wilderness. I'm not saying anything different than anybody who's awakened is saying. I just have my own way of saying it. But, and I can have 14 other people that describe something, but there'll be that one person that says it just in the way that resonates with my brain and it's a light bulb, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And how you had your awakening, like in a moment. I've had shifts happen in a moment over the last 30 years, or even before that, from the time I was 14 on, just things happen like in a spark. Right. Um, and when I've, shared that with people they look at me like what the heck that's not possible oh you know, no so it's quite common I, in my I, world <laughs> yes. I, I mean almost everybody I know that's I wish that for them I mean that's my fondish wish is a very graceful gentle easeful awakening of consciousness and not the cosmic two by four I got um that's that's right. harsh yeah. it's really harsh so i mean i what you're experiencing is what i wish for everyone and i and i know a lot of people and a lot of people are actually awakening like that and you know it could be that you're just uh you know not finding yet your tribe when you because once you find them it's surprising there they all are and you have very similar stories and you're walking the same path and you enthuse each other and you excite each other and you support each other and um and then and then there comes a point where in fact where it seems like everybody in the world is awakened because you know 300 people and they all are so it must yeah. be the world right, right. <laughs> so yeah. when we live at the frequency that we're at the world unfolds before us at that frequency Frequency. So experience in life is truly perspective and we're, we're seeing it at the frequency in which we are. Yeah. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. I'm so glad, Jenny, that you called in. Did you get your question answered? I did. Thank you for that. And yeah. I, I also like the um, people are showing up that are more in line with who I am now. Yeah. Good for you being you know yes thank you mm -hmm. thanks so much jenny for calling in and uh uh we're gonna make um you have the email you have um angie's email um available yeah. would you say that email again angie would you let our listeners know again one more time Yes, it is. My email is crystalarrays at gmail.com. And that's spelled C-R-Y-S-T-A-L-A-R-R-A-Y-S at gmail.com. All right. And so now we've just got a couple minutes left, Angie. And what is it now that we want to leave the audience with uh, for this amazing interview talk that we had today and what is it that you want to leave and, and, and say to everyone um, about the work that you do, what you're offering, or any other thing that you want to share? Um, you'll find a lot on my website. I'm available for a lot of things, but what I think I'd really like to leave the audience with is that awakening is it's not a goal. Um, some lives we awaken, some we don't. It doesn't matter. We're all here learning and doing things. This is, this is not a contest. There's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. We are eternal spirits, and we try on many, many, many costumes. So wherever you are and whatever you're doing, in the big picture, you're right where you're supposed to be experiencing what you are, and there's valuable learning in it for your soul, which you are composed of also your soul. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's give the audience the, uh, your website one more time. <clears throat> www.crystalarrays.com. That's C-R-Y-S-T-A-L-A-R-R-A-Y-S.com. Crystalarrays.com. And you can book with me through there, remote healing, psychic readings, all sorts of things. 
if you are local in the Colorado area or visiting Boulder, Colorado, please come for a tour. This is an amazing place. The tour is about three hours long. It's incredibly informative. We manufacture organ generators. We have a lab making carbon 60s. These are all things Spirit led me to for the health of the body. Apparently she wants me to be a while be around a while longer and you too um, and also a tour of the crystal sanctum which is a truly special place it's visited by uh, a shaman and priest and rabbis and pastors and all manner of holy people because the frequency it is at is a bridge state to the sixth dimension it's very easy there to contact with stuff and there's also a giant organ generator crystal bio bed there which you'll see on the website and physicists and electricians and other people like to come and check that out because apparently free energy is really interesting. <laughs> Thanks so much, Angie LaRue. It's been a great, been a great afternoon. Thank you so much. We'll talk again soon. Namaste.